it's time for our second challenge of 2023. And rather than building this solution along with you, um, I'm going to walk through the pre-built solution. So we have our outputs that we have connected to. And yes, you can have one more. Um, sorry, you can have um, more than one input for your flow files. Um, and to add more, you can just use this add connection button at the top here so that you can just keep connecting to as many files as you want to build your workflows. So we have um, the flow card equals yes output here um, and we have the flow card equals no values here. Um, but for this challenge, we, we are required to stack them back on top of each other. So recombine those data sets into one. And for that, we're going to use a new step called the union step. So the way that we get this step to appear is we can either go to one of our um, view steps here, press the plus button and choose the union option. Um, and then in order to make it so that we're um, stacking two of those together, so combining these two together, we would have to drag this view step this orange view step up to that union and add it into the front so that we're getting um, both of those appearing here. So we can see that we've got two inputs coming in. Um, the other way of doing that is simply picking up, say, the orange view step, dragging it up towards the blue one. And you can see we get two options here, a join or a union. And if we go for the union option, then you can see it creates exactly the same union step. So one of the key things that we're looking out for here um, is these colors that appear underneath each of the fields. That shows that this field is present in both of those data sets um, and they are stacking on top of one another. So that is all good. That's all matching up the way that we expect it to. And then we also get this table names field generated by the union step, which tells us which of the um, inputs it is coming from, either the flow card input or the non-flow card input. Okay, so the next part of this challenge then is to go and create a quarter from our date field. Um, so if I come back to this union step, I'll show you how you do that there since I've already applied the change here. So if I come to my date, then I would go to the menu here and you see we have this option for converting dates. So um, I can just choose that to be quarter number and then as you can see from uh, the example there, it's going to give us numbers one, two, three or four for the quarter number of that date. Um, and if I come back to my clean step where I have applied that change, then I can even go to the little pencil icon here and see the calculation that's written underneath that. There's our familiar date part calculation, getting the quarter number from this date. Um, and I just rename this field from date to quarter. Next up, we're going to use the aggregate step. So let's start off with the medium. So as per the requirements, we wanted to make sure that we're grouping by uh, the quarter, the class, the flow card, and then taking the medium price. So I'm just going to undo all these changes um, so that I can show you how we do that ourselves. So I'm just dragging these out for now, um, just so that I can show you how we make this work. It's breaking things down the flow, um, but that's OK. We'll get them back. So we know we want the class. So these are all of our fields in the data set on the left hand side. So we can pick up our class and drop it into the grouped field option. Um, you can see now we have four rows, um, one for each of those classes. Next up, we want to know if they have a flow card or not. So we drag the flow card into the grouped fields as well. And then finally, the quarter, we can drop that as well into our grouped fields. So we have our quarter class and flow card. Now we want our price. So we can see here that the default option for price is to sum that price up. But actually, that's not what we want to do. We want to take the median value. So I can click on the sum and I get these different options for how to aggregate it. So I'll click on that and choose the median instead. And you can see that's <laughs> no longer broken my flow. I've got all the fields back that I needed. Um, so that's all good. These other two aggregate steps are exactly the same, um, except for Oh dear, <laughs> I'm taking the median there. I'm supposed to be taking the maximum here. So I've made a mistake in my own flow file. Um, so I can just click here and change that median value to a maximum as it's supposed to be. 
And the minimum, let's check if I changed that. I didn't. Um, I did that one as a median too. So let's change that aggregation there to be a minimum as well. So it doesn't matter if you've made mistakes. You can always come back and edit your flows so that they um, are right going forwards. But at the moment, you can see how the, the name of the field has not changed. So it just says price. So I can try my usual trick to double click to rename it. Let's try even going to the options to try and rename it. Ah, it's grayed out in the aggregate step. So we can't actually rename fields in the aggregate step. We need to add in a clean step afterwards to rename it. So I'm just renaming the price to maximum, median, and uh, minimum. And then the requirements get a little bit tricky with their wording. But what they're asking us to do now is to make sure that we have a field for each class with the price that we have in that uh, step as the values underlying it. So what I mean by that is that our class is now going to become the new headers. So we're using this new pivot step um, and we're going to have the minimum price per quarter underneath each of those fields. So this is what that will look like. So. We have our quarter and flow card unaffected, but the class now becomes these four separate fields and the price information sits underneath that. When you bring in a pivot step, you may see that it doesn't look exactly the same as that. It actually starts off as a columns to rows pivot, as you can kind of tell by the icon. To make it be a, a rows to columns pivot, we have to go to this drop down here and change it to rows to columns. And then we can drag in our class to the top section drag in our minimum price per quarter to the bottom section to recreate um, that step. And we do that three times for each of these um, aggregate flows. And then we bring our union back in and we union those all back together. Um, so you can see that union's working how we want it to because of uh, those colors underneath. And at this stage, we've just removed the table names as well since we don't need that for our output, even though that's generated by the union step. And our final step is simply to rename all those fields um, given that mistake that was made as per the challenge. So just double clicking on each of these field names to rename it before outputting our data set. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed week two of beginner month and see you next week.